So now let's study another language that is also non-regular. So it's a language that you won't be able to represent using regular expressions or DFAs, NFAs. You really have to use at least a PDA to do it uh, or a context tree grammar. So let's convince ourselves that first that this is in fact non-regular. And as you can see, uh, you have A of N, B of N, uh, and then two times B. So as you might imagine with the pumping lemma, you wouldn't be you would be able to you know um, add p to be the the number of elements you want to pump and then you you add more a's than b's and it's not the double the twice the size or another thing you can do is you can uh, reduce the number but you have to explore all the possibilities um, so if you have fewer then here you will have two of of some n and here you will have smaller than that number so you won't be the double. Okay, so that I hope convinces you that this is non-regular, uh, or at least gives you an intuition on why it's that that case. So let us give a PDA that is able to recognize, and then let's show that it rejects ABA but accepts ABB. So one A and two Bs. That's what we're trying to say. Um, okay, so try to do that, and uh, please pause the video. And once you're done. Come back here and I'll show you the PDA I designed. Okay, so let's see what I did. Um, if you recall uh, the PDA that accepts the same number of A's and B's, so a sequence of A followed by a sequence of B's, um, this automaton is very similar. The only thing that we do is in Q1 we're reading the A's, right? And in Q2, whenever we read whenever we pop a B, uh, an A from the stack, we read a B like we did before, but we go to an intermediate state where we have to read another B. So we have to consume another B from the input, which means for every A that we read that is in the stack that we pop, we need to read two Bs. Okay, so this is a very easy way to represent that. And when the stack is empty, we can finally conclude as usual. Okay, so now what I ask you to do is to draw this diagram in your notebook and try to um, convince yourself that it does accept A, B, B. So it should accept A, so one goes here, it adds one element to the stack, and then with an epsilon transition it goes to Q2, and then it should accept B, where you read, you, where you pop an element from the stack, you only have one, so now the stack should be empty. You go here, and now you have um, consumed two Bs and one A. Stack is empty, and you are ready to conclude. Go to Q4, accepted state. So let's see this in the derivation uh, graph. Oh, first we are rejecting ABA, so let's do that as well. Uh, ABA, uh, from here we can go here, and then um, we can read A, right, A, um, and we push A, and then um, eventually go here to Q2, and if we read a B, at this point our stack, um, so here there's one A, and here we consume one, a, one B and pop one A from the stack, so now the stack is empty, and we need to read another A, but we can't because uh, we only have an edge to consume a B. So we are stuck in Q3. So in our graph, we're going to see a path that is stuck in Q3 as well. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, here it is. In Q3, we've read A and B, but we cannot read uh, A because in Q3, we're expected to read B. Uh, the other alternative is where we don't read anything and we reach Q4, Q2, Q1, and Q, and and none and any of those we can read a so we cannot read a from here we cannot read a from here or from here so the only path forward is this one uh, now let's do the what we were talking about before where we read a b b so try to draw the reduction graph for that uh, please pause the video okay so you can see here that we will let's go back again revisit a b b so we read 1a, and then we have 1a on the stack, we move to q2, and in this case we pop an a, consume a b, and then have to consume another b, 
two Bs, and then we're done. So we can read A, B, B. So again, this is the path that we don't care about, and in this case, we read A, B, and B. We're able to conclude.